Hi, I'm Mike from Hackaday, and I'm here at the International Manufacturing Technology Show with Tim Bell of Beam. How are you, Tim? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. i got to say, I'm really happy to have found you here in the additive manufacturing section, and your company is doing directed energy deposition. Is that right? That is correct. That's right. Can you explain a little bit about what, about what that is? Sure. Uh, directed energy deposition historically would have been uh, termed cladding. So they would have taken powder and blown it through a laser and coated a, a cylindrical roll to rebuild it. And about 20 years ago, some folks said, hey, what if we could more accurately deposit that material? And through time, uh, companies like Beam have been created. There's a few of us who specialize in a new terminology that we call directed energy deposition. And basically all that means is we're taking that and we're creating a 3D printing process by conveying metallic powder through a nozzle, uh, converging it with a laser beam to melt the powder, and then depositing it using a five-axis machine tool. Uh, a lot of people have hybrid systems where they take a traditional machine tool and mount a laser and a nozzle to it, but we actually design the machines for the process itself. And so I'm familiar with um, deposition where you build up a part and then you machine it back down, but you're skipping that machining part. How do you get the precision you need in order to um, forego machining? Sure, sure. We're trying to skip that machining process. So if everything works out in the future, we'll be able to deposit to very, very fine finishes and accuracies. Today, we're in the plus or minus four thousandths range, so which is good enough for anything that's not a connection point or if it needs to be a tapped hole. So the process itself has been refined to the point where the nozzles are very, very accurate on how they eject the powder into the laser beam. And then on top of that, more accurate machine tools have enabled us to get these tight tolerances. So what is the material that is the powder and where does that come from? Sure. So any basically with DED, any material that could be laser welded could be used in a directed energy deposition process. The results of the material are always different based on the parameter set. Today, it's mostly your inconels and titaniums and stainless. High temperature alloys tend to lend themselves very well to additive manufacturing because of the laser's ability to control temperature and heat and power. So, so we were talking about this part before, and you were saying that this is actually um, a part that you uh, added on to. It's not completely printed. Correct. So uh, this is uh, simulating what's called an isogrid, and it's a way to add structure to a thin case for a jet engine. And if we would have printed this whole cone, we would have had tens of thousands of dollars in Inconel. So we purchased a $600 spun uh, piece of stainless from Toledo Spinning, and then we printed the Inconel 625 grid on top of it. We also saved probably 30 hours in print time. So we were able to print the isogrid in 16 hours and then print the cone on the top in another two hours. So we have an 18 hour build for a part that's 32 inches by 30 inches tall. Is there any specialty design software in order to do that? That's the big uh, missing link today. You know, we we're fortunate to be partnered with Autodesk and their power mill product. Um, uh, Siemens has their NX product where they're taking traditional five axis cam tools and using those to create additives toolpaths. So in machining, you have toolpaths for removing and creating pockets. Well, they're creating strategies to add the material based on input from folks like ourselves and others. Well, I think it's a really interesting process, especially adding onto an existing part. Um, how long has your company been at market with uh, machines that can do this sort of thing? So Beam Machines is a spinoff from uh, a research institute in France called Irepa, spun off in 2012. The first machines were delivered in 2016. Been in the U.S. for about two years now. Uh, we're pleased to say that we're installing a machine next week in Oak Ridge National Labs to, to help those folks uh, take our energy to a much cleaner state. So you have everyone from aerospace to defense to um, research and nuclear power. So it's a pretty interesting product. So for Oak Ridge Labs, do you have an idea of what the application will be? Yeah, they're going to produce next generation reactors. Basic, basically a nuclear battery, and their goal is to print it in one solid piece. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Uh, so if people want to learn more about Beam and the machines that you build, where can they go? Sure. Uh, you can find us on the web at beam-machines.com. Great. Well, thank you so much, Tim. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Nice to meet you.